Welcome, welcome, welcome. Why everything comes on live. Welcome to You Be the Judge. I'm Dr. Paul Dyer, and then we have our two lovely co hosts, Marilyn Pierre, um, who ran for Circuit Court Judge in Montgomery County here in Maryland. And then we have Judge Claudia Barbara, who will come on sooner than later. We normally, um, I just want to let people know you can always catch us on either on my YouTube channel or iHeart or Apple or any other podcast channels you pick up. Just put in Bridges Live, you be the judge, and you will hear us live. I would like to say thank you to all the people who are listening. I'd like to say thank you to all the people who support the show. And I'd like to say thank you to all the American people who want to see some type of change. These are the things that's the most important to me and most important to us here at this show. Now, as we wait for the other co-hosts to come on, I'm, I'm going to first ask the question. Before I get started, because you, as, you, as the people here who join the show, we have um, um, Miss um, uh, Miner here, and then we have other people who are off air. Does, would there anyone who would like to share an update on the things they've been going through this week? Anyone at all? If not, I, I, you know, I don't like dead air. That's because that's the radio thing in me. But here's the thing. I want to ask people a couple questions. We know that we are going into certain circumstances in our civilization. Um, it's actually, I've heard and people talk about the civil unrest that we're having in our nation and in our communities. What do you think civil unrest comes from? Would anyone like to answer does it come from economic deficiencies or does it come from just crime or does it come from us not knowing our neighbors? What does civil unrest mean to you? Because when it comes to understanding what civil unrest is, I think there's a lack of understanding of how civility actually happens. There's not a correlation between civil unrest and civil understanding. But you can marry the two to understanding that this is why we are in so much turmoil emotionally and physically when it comes to our neighbors, the police, the laws, the things that are happening in our system, the things that are happening in our, in, in our political um, capital, not our capital, I mean more like political money, right? So a lot of times when we talk about political capital, we talk about what is it like to spend money on things that we need to take care of? Political capital can be votes. Political capital can be people you have in office. Political capital can be things that we're moving through what you call legal systems. What is that like for you? And how are we spending our political capital collectively? Because we know, that we know there are certain people in certain states. We look at Texas, they're always looking at succeeding in succession and the way the governor is working down in in in, in, in texas it doesn't seem you know i just found out recently that texas has the most people most black american in a state i and i did not know that i did not know that statistically but if, if texas and the way they're going a lot of people would not be happy, black America would not be happy if they succeeded and they do the laws the way they would like to do it. Will, can you hear me now? M Marilyn, uh, can you, you can, you're on mute. Oh yes, I, I could hear you. No, 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 uh, not Marilyn, uh, Miss Minor, you're on mute. Oh. Hello. And Will can't hear. I can't hear you, Will. I, I think some of the people are having technical difficulties on You Be the Judge. Remember, you can have You Be the Judge here every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Miss Minor, go ahead, speak. Oh, yeah, I was going to say first to Will, he may have to go out and come back in, such as myself. But to answer your question, Dr. Dyer, I, I, it's a combination. It has to do with the economy, it has to do with crime, and it has to do with people not voting. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to crime, when it comes to crime... I can't hear you. You, can, you, you can't hear me? can't hear. Oh. can't hear. I, I can hear you okay. fine. Uh, can you hear me now? Hi, Judge Claudia Barber. It looks like some of the people are having technical difficulties with their hearing. But Ms. Miner said, I was asking people... Dr. Dyer, you're on mute. 
Ah, yes, look at that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> look at me. I'm up here babbling away. <laughs> uh, so when you talk about civil unrest, Ms. Minor, you said uh, something about crime and economics. Judge Claudia oh, Barber, there is, what I'm doing there is my co-host right there. Um, when they talk about crime and economics, I actually think people are more economically in dysfunction than it, than it causes crime, than crime causes economic dysfunction. When we talk about civil unrest, civility, we're having more unrest because we don't have civility or understanding of where our life actually sits within ourselves Hello? and within our community. W Will cannot hear us. Can someone call Will's phone? Over again. I don't really? know that he's responding to the chat, so maybe, okay, is, oh, well, he must have done what somebody suggested, which is to go back out and come back in again. So, um, I definitely agree with you on the economic part, and maybe we should take this one step at a time, because I have been... Hold on, like, hold on, time out, time out, time out. I'm <laughs> in a just... I'm excited about this, I can't wait to talk to I'm, you. I'm in a just do it, it shirt, and, and Judge Claudia Barber is in gorgeous outfit, Marilyn yes. Pierre is in a gorgeous suit <laughs> outfit, I'm underdressed. I gotta go. I have to come out and come back in because I look like <laughs> Dr. Raggedy Bones here. This is enough. I didn't get the memo. Well, don't forget, look at Evangelist Minor. She always is immaculately made. Her hair is always in place. You know, and look at those gorgeous earrings. I mean, and she's such a beautiful woman. It, is that politically correct nowadays? Because I hear you're not supposed to tell kids that they're cute anymore. I can't really remember why, because I I didn't think there was, you know, it was such a bad thing to say to a child, "Hey, you're good looking." So I don't want to offend anyone. But I, I think I have to go I do get a jacket. want to say Evangelist I, Minor is a beautiful, beautiful woman. I actually think I'm going to have to go get a dinner jacket. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think, well. We take you as you are because you're what's important to us. You are right. Look at Judge Barber. She looks gorgeous. You know, and I, I really like what you're wearing. I just happen to be dressed the way I dress. I'm, I'm coming from work, so that's yeah, the reason exactly. why. So. Same thing with me. <laughs> and traffic was a bear today. Well, I had to go. It was. I had to commute today. Traffic was, oh, my. oh my gosh. Yeah, it yeah. was really a bear today. So go ahead, yes, Marilyn. You were too, talking but... about economics. Well, I was talking about economics. Um, you know how you usually start off by asking me what I did with my weekend? Well, tell me what you did with your weekend, because I'm really excited to talk about my weekend. And once we get started talking about it, I don't want to go back and then feel like I've got to ask you. So you tell me first, and then I will tell you. I, huh, what, <laughs> what did I do? I did something important. What? I did some. I just. I'll get. I'll have to get back to you because I just literally. I just drew a blank. <laughs> I I taught something, lectured something, and wrote something that I am sure of. <laughs> well, I I actually um, had a birthday weekend because my birthday sometimes falls on Labor Day and uh, sometimes it doesn't. But this weekend was a fantastic weekend for me. I attended a wedding in Norfolk, Virginia, and I also attended, well, actually, the, I, I, Barnes and Nobles had a spectacular book sale. A lot of the hardcover books were half price, so I went binge buying on books and bought some really fantastic books. Uh, one, a book on the abolitionist, an abolitionist handbook. I uh, bought, uh, um, I actually bought Mary Surratt a book on Mary Surratt, uh, a Civil War um, history uh, person uh, who um, I saw, because I wanted to learn more, thank you. Uh, I wanted to learn more about her trial and uh, how it went and whether or not it was a railroad conviction or was it really a fair trial. Do you want to uh, do you want to bring people up to date on 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 Surratt's trial and, and 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 how it and how it actually turned a lot of 
the 13th Amendment after that. So I think you mm -hmm. want to bring people up to date on that trial. Yeah, so uh, that, that book uh, intrigued me, and they had so much Black history books. Now, they don't put them all necessarily in the Black history section, uh, but, um, the, you know, I, I've already bought Slavery by Another Name and, and a lot of Ta-Nehisi Coates and a lot of Michael Eric Dyson's books. I've just gotten books and books and books and books, and books on account of race and, uh, <laughs> uh, and, you know, all of that. But I just bought a boatload more, uh, and I was thrilled that all the choices that I had out there. I also bought, uh, uh, when they ran the sale, I think last Christmas, I bought Her Honor, and I started reading that. And I also bought another book about rig justice. And this was the story of the uh, people who were arrested, convicted, and did jail time for, now, now everybody recognized this this story died in the news but remember uh, the the celebrities that uh, that uh, got their children admitted into these schools. elite schools yeah. and then the, and, and it was yeah. and it was not, and it was not based on merit or anything like it was all that money. It was all but money. they but but they paid somebody off to do yeah. it suppose and so I really wanted to learn more about you know, who went down and who didn't went down and who was the scapegoat and all that. So there is a book out there called Rig Justice. And I, I pulled that book up and, and bought it. Um, uh, so uh, sometimes I just really uh, go on a, uh, a, a book buying binge to <laughs> when I see fascinating books that I just, I can't, you know, I don't know if they're, oh, I bought a book on Fannie Lou Hamer. That was another one. It was the last one on the shelf. You're like, thank you. Yes. Woo. Got it. <laughs> so, <laughs> got really excited about that. Now, that was my weekend. So I'm thrilled. I'm happy. I am good. I am real, real good. I can't even tell you all the books then by name by name, but that's the gist of it. Well, did you know that Abraham Lincoln had planned to move all the blacks out of the United States to Brazil? No. Yeah. What book is that? It, it's it's historic. I have to find where the book I read it, but a historical issue of what Abraham Lincoln was trying to do. His issue was he didn't believe in slavery, but he didn't also want blacks here in America. So wow. he had he had had the idea of getting them shipped to Brazil. Mm. Oh, I've heard about that, but I didn't know what country. I thought it was some country back on the continent of Africa. No, it is. So what was there, which would make sense. It's closer. It's closer. You could walk there. Right. You know, right. conceivably. So pe like, people wow. thought that Abraham Lincoln was really for blacks. He was really for just uniting the money. It was about the money, the North taking over the South's money. This, you know, everything had a lot to do. It had nothing to do with the civil rights. It had nothing to do with blacks. And it had everything about killing the South's earning potential. They were mm -hmm. earning so much money that the North could not ever contend with that amount of money. Their trade value across the world superseded the North by a factor of 10 easily. So mm -hmm. if you kill the South's money, then you could take over the South's land and property. That's what but that that's not how things turned out. No, well, okay. You know? But so the thing is, is that, that when you really look deep into the 13th Amendment and the 14th Amendment Correct. and the 15th Amendment, those are very comprehensive. And keep in mind, these are amendments to the Constitution. Correct. So they had to have, you know, a large amount of support to get this stuff through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they did. Well, they did by, I'm sure they wrung a lot of necks yeah, and yeah. bribed a lot of people. But you know, the 1619 Project uh, by Nicole Hannah yes. Tom, and I, I bought that book twice. You yes. know, I got so happy. But um, uh, the book, uh, when she is on the master class, she delves into the 14th Amendment and how comprehensive that, you know, if you read that that 14th Amendment through in a very comprehensive way, we really should not be having all these battles that we're having. But we are, and I have but we read are. it because people haven't read it. And that has a lot to do with you attorneys, Judge Claudia Barber and Marilyn Pierre, and all you attorneys on this page, because there are people circumventing the yes. wording. Yes, 
<laughs> yes. Now let's talk about it's not, that, it's that's the word the itself is the interpretation. That's doing that. That's the interpretation. Exactly. Because people system. want to interpret it however they think. However they want to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you just make a mockery of the system because yes. you basically are saying those are just words on paper. But I interpret it and say whatever I want to isn't say. Isn't that law in itself is an interpretation and it's, it's, it's how you can prove the interpretation? Isn't that isn't that the legal precedence in law? Well, in law, the, the you know, the, the words have the, the meaning that they should have. So equal justice under the law means, you know, you shouldn't be stopped a hundred times by a cop uh, and, and I get, and, and I, you know, for the same offense that uh, another person doesn't get stopped for and then incarcerated. You know, I was actually thinking about a situation where uh, someone mentioned um, um, uh, the quite what, what was, was asked the, a question they, and I found out that this person uh, did, was arrested for drunk driving, but they never got a jail sentence. And I am looking at that now. I, I know, I don't know how many, I can I count on my fingers the number of black men that I know that was arrested for drunk driving and got a jail sentence, you know? So, I, I mean, I am thinking in my head that, that, you know, this is not equal justice under the law, uh, but a lot of that has to do with how we have, have elected people that, uh, don't enforce the 14th Amendment uh, as they should. Uh, now, we're the blame for that. If you're going to put somebody on the bench that's not, that's not uh, properly interpreting the 14th Amendment. So I mentioned that, and, and that, I call that political capital, right? We, we can spend it the way we want. Political capital is how we vote. Political capital has something to do with how we spend our money. Political capital depends on who we have in office. And what we thought we were spending our political capital on, we got bamboozled. Yeah. We got, yeah. We got yeah, yeah. robbed behind the counter. That's all it is. We believe because we don't know the law. And if because we don't know the law, what we believe doesn't really amount to beans. Because that's why blacks don't have political capital. Well, yeah, but at the same time, uh, politicians don't do what they what 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 we are led to believe that they are going to do too. They never promise. They don't have to. They don't have to promise anything. And then, or it, fake it, promise. You might as well call it what it is. It's a any, fake right, promise. Right. And if they do promise, where do we hold them accountable? Because we can't take them to court over the promise. Right. So right. there is no legal issue with the promise. Is there? Or is, I don't know. Well, it depends. I mean, if the promise is police reform, if the promise is, um, you know, a, a police accountability board, well, in Maryland, that, that, those promises, if somebody made them as campaign promises, they've been fulfilled. Uh, but people say, well, wait a minute now, that bill got watered down a lot. Right. We need to go back and do some more. Okay, well, you can, but who's who's making the campaign promise to do that? No one. And who's not? You know? So where are we going to go? Are we going to keep things in the status quo? Or are we going to move forward? You know? How, uh, and how, I'm, I'm, you know, in, in, in here you be the judge. We've, we've talked a lot about things that we bring people, have a conversation. And Marilyn sometimes will say, well, what is our solution, Right. She's such a solution-based attorney. And I think that's why shes they don't want her to be a judge. That, that's exactly what the issue is. It has nothing to do with because she's five foot mm -hmm. something or she's black and she's a woman. She's had so many solutions. They're like, we cannot have voice of reason in here. Huh. <laughs> well, well, that's I, bad. I think we're, we're all bad. looking at solutions, which is why we, we keep talking about these things as well. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, well, Holly is out of the room, but I'm glad that she sometimes focuses <laughs> us in terms of, okay, we know what the problems are. And unfortunately, I am going to bring up another problem before we get to solution. <laughs> but I think it works really well with what Judge Barber was talking about, as well as what you were talking about, Dr. Dyer. I know, like I said, you usually ask me what I did for um, my weekend. You and do? my weekend, 
I went to the National Book Festival. That's one of my favorite events in, in this whole area. I, I really like that. We live so close. We could just take the metro or drive and just go there. I absolutely love it. And uh, they had, of course, different segments, different books. One of the books that they had was called... Yeah. His name is George Floyd, I think. Is, is uh, oh, I saw I, that book. That's in the bookstore. That was on sale, too. Yes, go ahead. Yes, yes. Oh, and you are going to get that book. You know, I'm not <laughs> even going to say you want, You are going to want to get that book. I'm going to say you are going to get that book. Because they interviewed the author, Robert Samuels, at the National Book Festival. It's on YouTube. You could actually see the interview. And and I was like, wow. The, like I said, the name of the book is called, uh, his name is George Floyd and Robert Samuels and someone else who is uh, from the Washington Post uh, did some research where they researched George Floyd's family, I think seven generations back. I mean, could you imagine? And they said, this is going to blow your mind. Uh, I'm sorry, they found that George Floyd's great, great grandfather was the first in George Floyd's family to be emancipated. He, at eight years old, he was, eman he was a slave and then at, I'm sorry, he was enslaved and then uh, he was enslaved. And you, at wait eight a minute, old, you mean he was involuntarily relocated? You got to no, you no, got to we're not picking up. You were born in this country. So no, uh, yeah, no, no, so anyway. No. He, um, and he was emancipated, you know, cuz we are born free, but he was emancipated at, in in our vernacular at 8 years old. Poor as anything, After uneducated he was kidnapped. as anything. He manages to get 500 acres of land in North Carolina which put him in the two percent wealth scale for the scale for that time so he was a two percenter two percent two percenter and because oops sorry somebody wants to talk with me i guess <laughs> and so because he was uneducated uh because he didn't know what his rights were little by little they managed to steal everything away from him and Terrible. he ended up dying as a pauper so uh, think about what would have happened if George Floyd's family, who was at one point a two percenter, managed to keep that wealth. And that wealth is multiplied generation after generation after generation. So you could you could have George Floyd, who was accused of, you know, um, of passing a twenty dollar counterfeit bill or something like right, that. Right. You, you, you could have. Okay, had, so wait a minute now. Uh -huh. um, we're not gonna. We're not gonna. We don't know the le mm -hmm. the the legitimacy, and I'm mm -hmm. I've never at least I've never accepted the legitimacy nope. of that story. Well, nope. I said he was. Accused. I haven't seen the the dollar bill. Uh, no. Nope. Uh huh. And I don't even know. That's some junk. That's that, bull. Well, that I, I, bull. I, I agree. That's why I said he was accused. Of. That's what they. Right, that's what right, okay, um, okay. The, the phone call was about. Um, yeah. I, the man was not convicted of anything, and even with a conviction, sometimes we have to, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But I'm just, I'm just thinking about exactly. the rule of law, as you know, Dr. Dyer talked about. How is it that somebody who works, they said he was very industrious and he worked really yeah. hard, and that's why he was able to accumulate that much wealth in his lifetime. And like you're I talking said, about the ancestor. The ancestor. Exactly. Okay, so, but you know what? what? The thing is, is that when somebody has 500 acres and they have mm -hmm. it taken from under them, the government can be complicit in how that's done. That, that was the exact point. Estate. As a matter of fact, the government might have been one of the yeah. One, yeah. one of the say, entities say, that was responsible for taking it as well. And, all and you that, have to that do was, is say your real yeah. estate taxes is a million mm -hmm. dollars. Right. right. Exactly. Because exactly. they, 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 yeah, they do. Because they do yeah. that today. They do they that do with that today. In, the, in the mid domain. Uh -huh. And I I do probate cases, and sometimes I look and I'm like, oh my gosh. This family is going to lose this property because of some 
not so smart or not so educated thing that they did uh and and it's really really sad i i i i know many black families that that has happened to so that continues to happen i see holly had her hand up. well i i was going to recommend the article today in the post about i think her name is sarah rector who inherit had land that had oil in it she was fantastically wealthy and and this could be because of the depression you know no one seems to know how she went from uh you know great wealth to poverty but anyway it's it's just another story that should be read if we oh, if, 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 if we can come to some sort of an understanding that white men in the in these united states had taken so much from women people because they believe it was theirs once we come to that complete understanding that is the why or that's the how mm -hmm. we can then understand we can then maybe figure out the why but the why never brings the money back exactly that's that so once we so so what it happened so what it did we can never fix it and that's exactly and that's what we that's talk true. about reparations we're not mm -hmm. trying to get back something that you know black america's owed how about what black america deserves right well look if you look at the descendants of sally uh, hemmings okay first of all the the fact that sally was raped should have disqualified him from being president if you're going to apply the u.s constitution and laws which is why which is why we had 45. rape does not disqualify you from being a president it's terrible the fact that he was uh, and all these thomas jefferson everything right thomas jefferson memorial thomas jefferson this thomas jefferson that and the man is a rapist. Come on. Come on. I well, mean, now, that's, now that's a I valid... agree with you. And I would even go one further because she was so young when exactly. this happened that one might even say that she was that he was a, a child rapist, which might even be more but, aggravated. But throw in uh, the fact I, that she was a product of rape. Exactly. She was a half yeah, exactly. That, his... that, 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 that's true, too. Uh, but... Uh, Saying all of that, I want to play devil's advocate and said, but he was a man of his time. And, you know, we didn't know back, or those who lived back then didn't know that those kinds of things were wrong. And so, therefore, he was just a man of his time, like I said. You know, even if you accepted that, but see, you don't have to, in this day and age, uh, you know, uh, subscribe to the notion that you have to have statutes that live forever and forever forever and forever and forever and for memorializing these people there should be a shift and a change in who you're memorializing i mean yes. again we have this new statute coming up in dorchester county in cambridge uh maryland on harriet tubman let's change the 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 you know the the statues here who says they have to be here forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever yeah, and also, you know, you have the Library of Congress that I just said that I love the book fair and I have to give credit where credit is due because this was Laura Bush's initiative. Oh, right. And I really appreciate that because like I said, well, I love books and I I I get to see so many great authors and thank you, Laura Bush. We appreciate that. It's all free, everybody. It's it's I think it's pretty Almost always the first September and mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, the first so, Saturday in September. Um, someone put in the uh, chat. I saw it pop up, and I don't know if that was is that Miss Minor was was the Civil War about slavery. The answer is no. But what do you have, Miss Minor? Oh, she had another question in the chat. Question. I don't know why we can't hear her. Okay, there you go. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, recently, the um, a cold case has been finalized with the gentleman i think the cold case has been on investigation for 50 51 years okay and then with the woman who had emmett's here okay oh, right yeah. right yeah 
no, you know, nothing is being done. So she, she lied. So what? She old now? No, I mean, she lied. Okay. Now the news story that I read about the the sheriff deputy that was murdered and his assailant was. Uh, I, I understand he had confessed, admitted. Some one of the detectives went up to New York, found him, and he admitted that he killed him. Now this is fifty-one years later, but that just kind of shows you how how much attention certain crimes get. You know, some some crimes are offered this this substantial amount of reward monies, and a lot of people don't even understand how that works. And then you also have these crimes that go, this person has been free for 51 years. 51 years. 51 years. I, I was down, I, and most people know, I was down in the Equal Justice Center, when it, the Slavery Museum that's down in Alabama. Yeah. And it has these etched in hangings of why people were hung. And the reason why they mm. were all because of what someone said, mm. there was not one hanging because of something else. Like it's all because I saw him steal this. He was hung. I saw him do this. He was hung. So all the, all the hangings that happened in the, these United States is because someone said something. It's not mm -hmm. because it was proven in court and then hung. You know what I mean? Oh, those those are not lynchings. Those are killings. Those are you know you know the death penalty. So when we talk about lynching, it's because someone said something, and someone said they saw something. So Emmett Till is no different than the thousands of lynchings in the, these United States because someone said what they believe and what they wanted to believe. So you cannot bring those people to justice because it's okay for people to say what they think. It's not okay for how people act upon it. That's the difference. Well, lynchings, uh, however, I think, can still be brought to justice, just like you had that warrant. Now, somebody uh, knew that the warrant was necessary, and it was written out on Carol Bryant. Right. Uh, and so they had an intention to serve that warrant, but somebody just buried it. That's what I can tell. Now, based on what I've, I've read thus far, that, you know, the warrant was buried in hopes that nobody would ever find it. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. go back to Mississippi. We haven't left Mississippi, but Mississippi hasn't got any funding from the federal because the state holds it up. To Jackson, Mississippi, with all the water issue. Mm -hmm. Now we know Baltimore, people are trying to get water in Baltimore. Baltimore has been having a lead problem that I know of for 20 years. <laughs> that I know of. And I hear it goes back further than that. But they've tested the water back 20 years. Baltimore City's had a lead problem. Jackson, Mississippi's had a lead problem for over 50 years. The but, you know, there are solutions uh, to this. And, uh, we, uh, you know, they're not uh, 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 addressing and t the, the solution end of things um, uh, because, you know, you have HBC universities that put out brilliant engineers, architects, uh, that put out brilliant uh, people that can go in and fix these problems. Then why aren't they being fixed? Judge they need to Martin. put the money to the to to that, uh, you know, to that cause, and and, and fix it. My and it's not being done. Here, here's one of those problems. You, 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 you got me all, all in, 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 in technology. You got I'm, me. Wait, hold on, Mark. You got me all jumped mm -hmm. up and hyped up on my seat, Judge Corey Barber. Mm -hmm. I agree. You have these HBC universities. I'm mm -hmm. not talking about any other flipping university. You have mm -hmm. HBC universities who live in a state who the state has so much flipping disastrous issues 
that instead of them dancing in courtyards, throwing white parties, having these things, they should be in these neighborhoods doing what they do and fixing it. But they're not. And I blame the HBCU colleges for not being active in our communities. Okay. That's a that's a fair statement because they should be more active. At one point years ago, they were the ones that were at the forefront of starting the marches, Correct. Right. the sit-ins. Right. It was the HBCUs that right. did that campaign that that started the okay. Well, you two sit, you five sit at the counter, then five more come on right behind them, and then another five come right on behind them, and th- that was well, an organized uh, campaign. Even in Montgomery County. Uh, the not not the carousel Glen Echo Park, yeah, it was Howard University students who were arrested for trying to integrate uh, Glen Echo Park. And so, yes, I definitely agree with that. And as an HBCU former student and an HBCU graduate, Howard, woohoo, go Bison! Yes, so <laughs> I myself am a bit disappointed that you're right, Dr. Dyer. It's nice to have parties and things of that sort, but we have a higher mission that we need to address. And in the past couple of decades, it doesn't seem like it's being it's been that's addressed that's at where all. that that discussion and that motivation mm-hmm. needs to happen again. Yes. And I say that realistically because. The bottom, I don't think the solution is filing a lawsuit no. and waiting for years of litigation nope. to, to, you know, just go whichever way, you know, the, the judge says so. Because that system doesn't, it isn't if it's perfect at all. Systems are, bro- systems are broken because the cost of containment of risk is so excessive that it is budgeted out of large scale projects unless Mark, project Mark, itself, Mark, Mark let me let Mark. me finish my statement just <laughs> fair and fair thing just as uh, uh in systems where death is imminent their budget will have more capital uh a- allocated to it to cover that that loss such as in air flight but systems on the ground, like the ones that are coming apart uh, in killing lives, those systems have such had such a long win- a much longer window of time before a disastrous effect would happen. And so, when they build these systems, built these systems, even today, they don't. the The cost of the containment of risk until in, until it becomes something that's imminent. Uh, budgets don't include, won't cover that in their costs, and so it's. But boom. see, that's that I speaks don't... to a change in policy. Yes. Because mm-hmm. when this pandemic hit, we came, we found money in the couch. Mm-hmm. In fact, mm-hmm. we found billions of dollars in the couch yeah. to yeah, find I, formulas yeah. and ways to get a vaccine together. Because that was imminent. I, which is why I don't think it's yes. it's eminency. That's the problem because. There's eminency in Baltimore. There's that in uh, Mississippi right now. Mm-hmm. There was there's that in Michigan. I think mm-hmm. it's it's the value that is placed on certain lives because it's if it's imminent in Baltimore now, mm-hmm. it's imminent. But when that system was built, uh, no, no. That, what I'm saying is that if that were happening in Baltimore County. Instead mm-hmm. of Baltimore City, I think yeah. there would be a different response. I, I don't think the people oh, in, in Baltimore County mm-hmm. would, would... Then why do blacks spend $41 billion on sneakers? So you, when, when, you talk yeah. about, when you talk about cost, I talk mm-hmm. about... Mm. I, I, it, it hurts. I, I, I agree. It hurts. I, I agree. It, it hurts. I, I don't. If, if black Americans can spend not on shirts, shoes, mm-hmm. we're talking about $41 billion on sneakers. And so much of it is on sneakers they're not even going to wear. It, it, you're it, right. It boggles the mind. Boggles so, the mind. But, then, but then those same people live in lead-filled cities. Mm-hmm. Those still same people, majority of them, don't care that the political capital that we talked about, economic voting, voting rights, 
we 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 have talked about voting rights on this show and we'll continue because we're in a voting season and mm-hmm. and a lot of votes voting issues have gotten out of now they're down to com- county issues it used to be states issues it's gotten down to the certain it's gotten back to so bad it's back to the 1950s and to what county sheriff depends on how you can vote or not vote we are in trouble we're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, we are. And a lot of people, like you're saying, they don't recognize that we are in a state of crisis. And I don't know if it's if the mind, sometimes it's easier to, you know, put your head in the sand and say, there's not much I could do to change things. So I'm just going to. It's not my problem. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people say that. It's like, why bother? We hear it. Why all bother the time. me? I'm in, like, I'm in Montgomery yeah, County. Like, I'm I not can't do anything city. about this. So I'm moving on to something that I can do something about. I could buy a $300 pair of sneakers or, you know, we have a friend who wears $800 Prada sneakers and his son <laughs> wears. Two thousand dollars sneakers. I'm like, excuse me. You know, I didn't even know there was a thing as a two thousand dollar pair of sneakers. Now, he makes a lot of money, but he's, you know, that, that's my exactly. complexion. So. <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to say good, good evening, everybody. I'm sorry I was late, but oh, and, no, and you're talking about misplaced yeah. values. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about putting money into the general, into the coffers that's supposed to be used for, I assume those <laughs> things like um, fixing pipes and, and mm-hmm. schools and all of those things, then what happens to that? Why is it that we are now putting the onus on the individual and taking it off of the government who, just like um, Judge Claudia said, can find money in a, in, in a sofa? I, you know, I... Yeah, but- I, I think I think the point is, if we were to use our money to help us get better people in office, then we can then expect those people to help the, the government to then help our our people in need. Like for instance, the friend that I I just talked about, I just remembered he's never given a penny to my campaign. Now, mind you, I don't think I've asked directly, but he has. He Wait a minute. Time out. Time, so said, time out. Time out. Time out. You've hit the problem. The mm. flipping problem. You, 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 you say you have a friend who has X amount of money on shoes. You use mm-hmm. the, you, oh, yeah. not only you didn't use person, you know, somebody you pass by on the bus stop. You mm-hmm. said a friend. And yes. he's he never given money to your campaign, mm-hmm. knowing you and what you could do, would do. And, and exactly, and that's the point. So we're not putting the onerous on on individuals to change it. We're just saying, you know, we could better invest that money to get the people we need in power, so that when they get in power, they could then recognize that it doesn't matter if there's you know lead in the pipes in baltimore city or baltimore I'm county offended. or I'm you know offended. or I'm you know I, potomac there's I, water I, in the pipes and we need to change those pipes i'm offended i mm-hmm. we have to be a teresa this is what our issue is whoever this person is and i really don't want to know his name because i'm going to have words for him I'm going to, I would like to talk to this person because I have. I need to tell this person. Someone he needs to talk to me. We will have a conversation sooner or later because his ideology is the reason why Jackson, Mississippi, is in trouble. Mm-hmm. Is the reason why we are in trouble. Pick a county. Pick a country. Pick a state. Is because we have people who have 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 stuff who don't give back stuff, and who don't care about change. And then you have the few people who scratch and claw every damn day to try to make a, a, a damn difference to kids, adults, and seniors. Holly, I'll get to you, but I'm so <laughs> pissed off that you have people who have, who don't do. So now we're stuck with... Let me ask you for five dollars. You have a person who has a buck. They give five bucks, ten bucks, and then you have a guy who spends two thousand dollars. I don't care what. And and I I, I want to make sure that we 
say that just because you have made it, just because you're doing well for yourself, doesn't mean that you are obligated to support everybody else. Because they say that's how uh, some people who have done well for themselves, how they end up bankrupt. Because all of a sudden, we're not asking for you to, we're not asking you to, that they didn't know about it. Say, hey, I'm your cousin. Can you give me some money? And, you know, can you pay my bills and stuff? So that's not what we're saying, because there's that issue as well. We're not asking you to buy yeah. chocolate bar, chocolate bars for the for the for the city kids. We're asking mm. you to to help us put a person in position to help other people. We're, that's exactly. all. We're not asking you to buy exactly. fucking turkeys for the whole community we on do, Thanksgiving. To help you even because you never know what you you know who you might need. You never know who might be in that room who might be able to help you but if if your thing is hey i'm just going to go and buy this thing that has <sighs> what well, that we don't consider to be as valuable as you know Holly. well i think that and put, to put it in perspective money. to put mm -hmm. it in perspective you know i'm not trying to say mm -hmm. well he could have taken that two thousand mm dollars -hmm. he put out on sneakers mm -hmm. and and advance somebody's campaign no what 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 I am saying though is that uh, if he has the the ability uh, to uh, put some contribution there, uh, it is advancing a candidacy that will change policies that will make Thank the you. system better. Thank you. Exactly. Exactly. Polly, go ahead. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I I switched subjects. <laughs> I but I I. I'm in a quandary myself because everyone and their uncle is asking for money and not people I know or anything, but I'm, I'm tremendously swayed by people buying elections too. And I don't know how you cross the line. I, I, okay. So just that's, that's another point. I wanted to address that, but I just want to commend it, uh, recommend another article in today's oh, okay. post. Oh, oh, Holly, before you, before you do that, okay. let me, let me say that. You, no one here has to give everybody and their uncle money just because they ask. Yeah, because people, politicians are going to ask. No one has to give, no matter how much money you have, you don't have to give it to Marilyn, people just because Marilyn, they ask. You're too nice, but, but I'm going to say it for, I'm going <laughs> to say it for myself if I was you. If you, yeah. if I'm, if you, if I'm going to call you the F word, the friend word, mm. my family, <laughs> whatever F word you can put towards it, I shouldn't have to ask you. Let's go with that. Okay. Well, well, that that's true. That that's what you would think. I agree with that. Being from the position that I am, because if I, you know, I, I've given money to people that I support because I know, and and people who I don't support have asked me for money, and I'm like, mm, no, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, you but know, I didn't want to interrupt your point, Holly. I just wanted some, to some of the greatest contributors to my campaign mm -hmm. uh, back in 2016 was uh, two attorneys. One uh, was a, a retired prosecutor who understood that the system was rigged. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one was a prosecutor. My that's surprising. Uh, because usually white the male system, too. Yeah. White male too. Real uh, surprise. You know, the other one was um, a, uh, a a a retired uh, lawyer judge like myself. But I'm not retired. But he's he's retired. Mm -hmm. uh, but he gave money. But he came up as part of the struggle. He was an activist in college. And uh, he didn't finish uh, law school until uh, I think his 50s or 60s, but he came up through the Black Panther era. And so he was very familiar with the civil rights movement and the work of activism. So he understood that, hey, she needs, if she's gonna run in this campaign, then she needs money. Mm -hmm. She just needs money. If, we're, if she's gonna get anywhere, she needs money. Can anyone get... can anyone think of an election that was not swayed by money? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can. Go ahead, Will, because you're the oldest of us all, okay. and and you yeah. and and I I was gonna make a Jesus Christ uh, comment, but um... <laughs> okay. 
1988, Blair Ewing ran unopposed for the Board of Ed. Say, and he threw in $300, and I threw in $300, and at the end he gave me back my $300, or he told me to give myself back the $300, and he, all he spent was one picture. Wow. See, and he won, of course. <laughs> so. But that was unopposed, right? That was unopposed. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And what a big difference it is to be unopposed. Do you know that Andrew Freitz in, in our county council had no opposition? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, right. it's weird. Just weird. I, I don't think they should be called an election if it's unopposed. That's how I feel. And I also believe in public financing, period. Across the board. Well, even with public financing, Montgomery County has public financing for the county executive and the, uh, county council members. And that has been an issue because you have to have a, a minimum. David number. Blair, six point huh. one million dollars. Wow. Well, he didn't use public financing. Wait, wait a minute. He spent six point one. Yes. No. Oh, if you say so, I have no reason he to doubt. He spent six point one mm -hmm. million dollars, lost by thirty-two votes. I <clears> have <throat> an issue with that. Not you that do. he lost, yes, not that he lost, but he's going after a seat and he spends $6.1 million to get... I thought Trone did the same thing. Somebody else did the yeah, same Trump thing. Yeah, Trone did the same thing. Just buying a seat. He, he spent Trump what? did the same thing. Or, or you know, trying, trying, trying to buy a seat. Trying to buy a seat. Blair did it, you know, four years ago, too. So mm -hmm. someone needs to ask, we need to find out what does six point one million dollars, even if you win, what's the return? Because mm -hmm. no idiot in their in their lifelong mind spends six point one million dollars knowing damn well you ain't getting that shit back. Okay, well, I feel like I have to go back to Holly because I interrupted Holly. Okay, yeah, okay. It was for you all to read an article in today's paper, which was about Landon students being recorded with chance on the metro with the n-word and we would not know anything about it had it not been recorded now and, and then the the school is kind of walking it back and it's the and i kept thinking i got carl stoden's book why didn't i read his book i mean does he have any impact on montgomery county what do we do when we know this you know they're waiting for what is landon going to do yeah, I you mean the school. Yeah, I mean what 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 I'm saying is the article kind of shifted. We're going to see what Landon is. Well, obviously they didn't educate the kids very well to begin with. I don't think the onus should be on the miscreant school. Really? On the but school? I, I remember uh, with all, all this one, we actually looked at Landon as one of the. I I don't even know why we looked at it because I I. I like I said, I don't even know why we looked at it or what I was thinking at the time, but we did. And we decided that it was not the school for us <laughs> because... Uh, oh, well, God. it wouldn't be for you, Mary, it because it's all was, males. So <laughs> no, no, for our son. Yeah, 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 yeah we for decided that, that wasn't the school for... That, that wasn't the environment for him because... Uh, before we, we think about the academics, I, I thought that was actually lacking I, I, and I, I couldn't believe how. I, I, I do want to have a shout out real quick. I know we're coming into the top of hour and I want to thank everyone for coming on. You be the judge. You be the judge is here every Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. You can always catch us here on iHeart, iTunes and all your <laughs> podcast channels. Oh, my goodness. Is, is that the infamous Steve Waddy? <laughs> my, oh, he's got to give us a shout out here and you be the judge. This man, he, he pounds the ground when it comes to taking it down. T <laughs> Steve, tell us what's going on in the world of Steve Waddy and making sure these white people walk right. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. You got a bunch right of people. Now, <laughs> you got a right bunch now, of people. I'm, <laughs> I'm just following in Judge, Judge Barbara's footsteps. She, <laughs> she's the one. Taking the lead and giving giving uh giving the community hope. So I I just follow in her footsteps. 
See, uh, I, I emailed Judge Barber and was like, can we do a contest for uh, the students around voting rights? And she took it and ran with it <laughs> and gave it a whole cash prize and everything. And I'm just like, I just wanted to get a discussion started for the kids so that they'll vote. And, um, you know, she's really taking it on. And so I'm. I, I just follow her footsteps. She's definitely been my leader. When it, when it comes to activism and, and Judge Cory Barber and Marilyn Pierre, I have some baton carriers here. I got some track stars. I tell you that. Yeah. I, I They think we're running the four, four by four, and I'm just trying to hold it down and just trying to keep my pace. And these two ladies, they run. You they, can't keep pace. They run. You can't keep pace. <laughs> they, 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 they're moving. I forget all that Judge Barbara does, I, I, and I think that everybody knows everything that she does, and she's so modest, she doesn't talk about it. So thank you so much, Steve, for bringing up how wonderful and fabulous this woman really is and how much she contributes to her community and to us. Yes. So, I mean, that, that's just, just one thing. That's so just that's one thing. thing. Exactly. You know, <laughs> let's, let's also bring up the fact that this was a brainchild of Steve Waddy's. There's a youth essay contest now into fruition. Yeah. It is in Anne Arundel County, and juniors and seniors can receive cash prizes. Go to the Anne Arundel County uh, NAACP.org website. Look up the flyer. It should be there, uh, but it is uh, posted, and we are distributing it. the deadline for submissions October 1. It can be poetry. It can be verse. It can be a rap. Uh, but it's an essay of 300 to 500 words. It's out there. And uh, all you have to do is submit your uh, your 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 work uh, to us by d the deadline date. It will be evaluated and we will award prizes. It's it's out there. And thank you, Steve, Steve for, for you bringing spotlight to this issue, because we want those voters registered. Hold on, Steve, I want you to give us one thing that you're working on that we need to stay focused on just a little bit here, either in Maryland or the United States as a whole. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, tomorrow, um, tomorrow we have a housing trust meeting in here in Anne Arundel County. Um, you, as you all know, this is a nationwide issue where we've yeah. been in a, a nationwide seller's market. Uh, the price of housing has gone up exponentially since the pandemic, uh, you know, started. And one of the solutions that came from the early CARES Act money was uh, rental assistance and emergency rental assistance and emergency mortgage assistance. Um, because we had a million people going to unemployment right. in April of 2020 in the state of Maryland alone. We had a million people file for unemployment in April of 2020, which is unheard of, crazy. So um, so people were missing payments and whatnot, and, and landlords felt like they could take advantage. And they did. Uh, some, some landlords took advantage. Other landlords were trying to supplement income that that they were missing. You know, so, um, so uh, our county executive had the foresight when he first ran for office to make affordable housing part of his main platform and he he's been working on a housing trust bill for the past two years that the NAACP supported we had to get the state legislature to agree for us to have a housing trust to be able to build affordable housing in Anne Arundel County um, and so tomorrow I'm going to learn how the county plans on using some of the CARES Act funds 10 million dollars to do affordable housing uh, uh, construction in Anne Arundel County. So that's that's the one thing. And I want to say this is a nationwide issue. And we talked about the Inflation Reduction Act that Joe Manchin, um, <laughs> you know, sh shepherded through the Senate. Joe Manchin stripped one hundred and fifty billion dollars worth of uh, inflation reduction in affordable housing yes. funds from the Build Back Better Act, which the House had passed, um, and, and he stripped that in the Inflation Reduction Act. And so there was no affordable housing assistance. Joe Manchin also stripped childcare assistance. That's right. That we were, that 
families were receiving. See, geeks um, like me read that stuff. Yeah. Um, Joe, Joe Manchin also stripped out, well, I think Kirsten Cinema stripped out the, uh, the argument for private insurers to uh, negotiate with pharmaceutical companies uh, or purchase pharmaceutical companies. So the three areas that are the most, inf uh, uh, the largest um, causes of inflation and the, and the largest aspects of the consumer price index, which measures inflation, are housing, yep. education, and, and medicine. medicine. And transportation is the other one. Child care is, those are top five. So um, the Democrats, in, you know, the two most conservative, as I would say, have done their best to, um, you know, destroy family wealth and, and uh, any assistance from the federal government for families to get out of this hole they're in and assist families in, um, in paying for child care, better education, health care, and, uh, and housing. It, it, um, and, you know, it, it's evil. It's evil. It's evil. It, it sounds so, like Steve should come back one of those weeks and we could spend an hour discussing this because I really would like to discuss this more in depth because there there's so many things that we don't know about. We know what's reported in the press. Oh, look at that. You know, uh, Joe Manchin finally no, agreed. Geez. But what was agreed to and what was taken out and why was it important to have had that, he, he's devil be, incarnate. Uh, uh, be he, kept in. He's devil incarnate. And before we take off, I want Judge Claudia Barber. One more, one more thing. One more thing, Dr. Paul. Yeah. The last thing we learned at the Maryland Civil Rights uh, Gala that they also stripped out the funding for the black farmers in the oh. in the um, I, in the bill in the in the Inflation Reduction Act. They had a line where they didn't mention the farmers by name. But it was the the provision that uh, that they had from a previous bill or law that was passed, where they gave two billion dollars to black farmers, and that provision was defunded in the Inflation Reduction Act. You know, taking the two billion dollar settlement, pick for settlement away from the the black farmers. So the Inflation Reduction Act was a was you it's know a, it's a horrible situation. I, I, for, I, I, and, I, and I and I talk with the, an attorney who works with the for black farmers, been trying to get them their money for the longest time for the last ten years. I'm actually trying to get her as some time to come on our show here. You be the judge. And again, thanks, Steve Waddy. And I want to go to Judge Claudia Barber because she has not mentioned she's so sneaky and she has a podcast show. Remember, I told see you guys don't know who she is until you she's got her own show. Judge Claudia Barber, please introduce your show and tell us what time we can catch it and where we can see it. Well, uh, the podcast is on so many platforms. I forgot all the names of the platforms, but uh, it, you can. Oh, you hear what the oh. FBI did? I'm telling yeah, you, the oh, FBI no. does this to us every time. <laughs> they are and they monitor. Wow! Right, wow. because they monitor our show. Most <laughs> people don't know that the FBI oh, monitors our. Hold on, see, they're doing it again. See, J. Edgar Hoover is alive. <laughs> I'm telling you, they've been after Judge Claudia Barber since she's been alive. I, ever since her father did a preach, they've been like, we're getting after your daughters. We're, we're making sure they shut the shit down. Judge Claudia Barber, see if the FBI lets you get through. Well, I'm going to try to put it in the chat here, but uh, feel free to... Um, uh, definitely uh, look up our our podcast on, uh, it's called Being Well Informed. That's also the name of the show. And you can uh, Google that under Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts, and it will come up. Uh, so uh, thank you for allowing me to share that uh, information with your audience. Uh, we have, we've just finished a talk show last night on the beginning, beginning the Alzheimer's journey. Uh, with attorney Karen Pope on Wokey. 
and uh, she's part of the Senior Lawyers Division of the American Bar Association. Uh, but we've had Carl Snowden on our program. We hope to have Wes Moore in our program. We hope to have Brooke Learman on our program. We hope to have Kurt Schmoke on our program. So those are coming. Uh, uh, and we also hope to have um, uh, a talk show on uh, Blacks, how they're treated in the newsroom. Uh, that hopefully is also coming to You Be the Judge. Uh, hopefully next week, Mary Lynn Pierre, if I want to make sure we get that all lined up and part of this um, uh, uh, opportunity to share information to, with the public. I know we're over our time. I want to say thank you guys, everyone. Um, be kind, be compassionate, be love, and let you know that you be the judges here every Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. and Easter Standard Time. If you have any questions, comments, please contact us, put it in the inbox, and do all the things social media things does. And if you want to be part of our show and you think we want to talk about something, let us know because we're here about informing, understanding, and action. Thank you. God bless. Be safe. Be kind and love. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Bye.